are through the waves. Australian Byron Marsh probably prefers the power to the poetry of windsurfing. Ranked number one in Japan, the current Australian marathon champion is up there with the best. Oh, so I'm just going to stand up? Yeah. yeah. Right. What's the, what's the, is there a trick to this? Um, not really. Just, just and when you are the best, you can make it look oh so easy. The world's best and the world's worst together at last. As any windsurfer will tell you, the first time is never easy. Despite the fact that under my feet is the very latest in super lightweight carbon fibre board, and above me, top of the range monofilm sail, it seems no amount of technology can save me from winding up in the drink. I can only imagine what it must have been like back in the 60s when they basically stuck a sail on top of a heavy old Malibu board. You'd think with all the materials they're using in a model like this, the windsurfing technology might have just about reached its peak. But if you talk to the experts, they'll tell you that it's just on the crest of a wave. It may be out on the water where the stars perform, but it's in here that some of those winning ideas are born. Designer Andrew McDougall is steering sail design in some exciting new directions. Fed up with conventional methods, he loaded up this converted school bus with his computer and his imagination and hit the road in search of inspiration and the perfect sail. Sit on the beach and watch a seagull and how refined that wing is. That flexible wing of a bird is so much the ideal that one strives for. It's a quest that's enticed master mariner and sportsman alike. How to achieve the perfect marriage of material and design. Wind speed, wind dynamics, even air temperature, all these have a major bearing on how sails and craft perform. So Andrew is using computer-aided design, or CAD, to realise his vision. Uh, it's a design tool used widely these days, but for Andrew, the programs on offer were simply too limited. So, off he went and built his own. This is, yeah, this has got all the information we, we need to make a sale, and there's various, there's all sorts of information we put in in, in numerical format. Mm -hmm. other, for, other things we actually edit by pulling around with the mouse. Right. The advantages of creating designs like this are immediately obvious. With his digital draftsman board, Andrew can make tiny adjustments, a millimetre to the size of a panel here, a tweak in the shape of a curve, and determine how it might affect the overall performance. Andrew's system is now used to design about a third of all windsurf sails. What we're going to do now is actually add a bit more shape in this area, trying to get a bit more backhand in the sail, a bit mm -hmm. more power down low. So all I have to do is, is uh, pick the batten and the, the seam, add a new number in here, and basically just make the panels. Once that's done. It's doing about six million calculations now. Really? So you can just send that straight down the line and start cutting it immediately? Immediately. Fantastic. At the other end of that line, sail plotter Peter Scott receives those design instructions, which he feeds to the computer-controlled plotting machine. It traces out the precise patterns conceived by Andrew to create what first appears to be a bewildering mess of lines and shapes. It's then up to some more familiar technology to give them life. First cutting the individual panels and then sewing them to create a unique and hopefully more efficient windsurfer sail. Okay, well here's the finished sail, but um, I don't know, to the layman it looks exactly the same. Where are the changes? Well. Yeah, this this yeah. line here is actually the, the line we saw on the computer okay. and that in the program divides these panels right okay. so what we've done is we've added shape here which is so when we join those two pieces of cloth yeah. we suddenly get a three-dimensional shape let's take a piece of paper and cut a v out of it yeah. and and get that cone shape and we've, that's what we've done there can you describe what it's like once you were sailing this probably for most people are not going to notice that sort of difference but that that's when you add them all up a, a, over the progression of a development over a year or, or even a few months, yeah. you start to, to get a whole difference in the sail, particularly in the balance of the sail. 
And as subtle as all that may be, for professionals like Byron Marsh, that little bit extra is all important. I've done so, so much testing with so many sales that small changes um, do feel quite significant. Um, normally I have the same board and the same identical setups with both sails rigged on the beach to test them in identical conditions so I can get a pretty good idea um, sailing with them. Technology aside, there are still plenty of challenges ahead for champions and designers alike. The thought that a little refinement, a new idea, might produce the winning edge might take them one step closer to perfection. It is perhaps an endless path. But it's something that no one, not least of all Andrew McDougall, seems to mind. For the rest of us, there are some more immediate challenges ahead.